up, it's been almost two years since I switched to T-Mobile Home Internet, and I have to say that it's actually been very good. And I'm quite impressed with the quality and the service that they've provided. Let's begin. Irony aside, I have to say the T-Mobile home internet experience has been pretty okay, which is why it's kind of perfect to do an update review video, because I can't say it's been horrible, and I also can't say it's been great, especially last year around summertime, T-Mobile started changing up the billing process, which was quite annoying and quite frustrating. For whatever reason, my payment method failed, possibly because I was out of the country and Apple Pay didn't know what to do or something, but I've had multiple times now with T-Mobile where a payment authorization will fail for whatever reason. I'm using the same credit card with lots of different services and not having any issues except with them. I have a failure on the charge and they don't tell me about it and because the auto pay fails they add a $5 charge and then they don't notify me that the payment has failed and then start collecting like overage fees. So suddenly I would go into my account and it'd say your bill is $67 or $70 after telling me that with auto pay turned on it would be $50 a month even though their system failed they were penalizing me for it and it seems like they would get it fixed anytime I'd call in so that's the running theme I have here is that if you contact the normal T-Mobile customer service they cannot help you I've talked on the phone with them and I've texted with them and they will not waive any fees like that and they will not answer your questions but if you call directly the T-Mobile home internet customer service line those guys guys for some reason can do a bunch of different stuff even though the normal T-Mobile customer service they will never refer you to those guys they won't say like oh you need to be talking to the home internet customer service they never bring that up but if you do call the home internet customer service line they tend to be much more helpful if you complain about an overage fee like that that's clearly their fault they will typically refund you the fee or at least deduct that amount of the fee from your next bill which is what they did in my case and early on when I first got the service there were times where I would be without internet for like a few days or a week and if that happened then they would give me an entire month of service after that for free so not the most stable internet in the world but usually if you call that customer service number they're pretty good at taking care of you and thankfully since that initial shutdown that happened just a couple of months after getting the service I haven't had anything that massive I've never reached a point in the past year and a half where the service just straight up shuts off but I do have to say about a month ago there were times where the speed of the service took quite a noticeable dive and it didn't recover for like a week and I tried moving the router around and unplugging it and plugging it back in and download didn't seem to be affected all that much it was fine for watching movies and streaming TV shows and that kind of thing but for my line of work which involves a lot of live streaming and uploading videos the upload speed for whatever reason took a massive dive and suddenly it was taking me you know five six hours to upload basic videos so I actually just fell back on my phone because I can upload YouTube videos straight from my iPhone via the cellular, you know, 5G connection and I have Mint Mobile, which is relying on T-Mobile Towers, and I thought Mint Mobile was supposed to be deprioritized and yet, still, I was getting much better upload speeds on my phone than I was on my home internet, which I don't understand why. To me, that says a lot more about the gateway or T-Mobile themselves deprioritizes the home internet compared to even the MVNOs using the towers so, at least in my experience, I don't know if this is what T-Mobile claims on their website or anything, but my experience is Mint Mobile seems to have priority over T-Mobile home internet, both of which I think should be below priority of just having straight up T-Mobile phone internet, but that was quite frustrating, and it was getting to the point where I was thinking about calling in and asking for another free month because they seem to hand those out pretty consistently, and it slowly recovered after a couple of days. It was kind of in the middle of the holiday season, so I was wasn't working a ton during that week, but it was annoying, but because I know that all the other internet options in my area are going to be more expensive, I'm willing to put up with some spottiness in a little bit of unreliability, because the only other options I have are basically Starlink, which is going to be a $600 upfront charge, then after that $120 a month, which is way more expensive than T-Mobile, and Comcast, which does have fairly cheap options if you're willing to put up with slower speeds, but my primary focus is the faster upload 
download speeds and we don't have fiber optic internet in my area. We also do not have Verizon home internet, which I've heard great things about, but I've checked for it in my region and it just says it's not available here. So I've basically reviewed every possible internet service I can get where I live. And if you want the better upload speed from Comcast, you gotta pay for the much more expensive plan, which is far more than 50 bucks a month. Xfinity tends to have a lot of introductory prices, but I've already been a customer before, so I know what it's like to kind of like haggle with them and try to motivate them to lower your prices, and I don't want to do that either. I like kind of the flat fee approach of T-Mobile internet. It's not a tiered system. It's like, do you want to pay more for faster service? It's just one fee. Although they have been a lot more stringent about how you get that $50 a month price. Originally, you could just sign up with Apple Pay, and with the Apple Card, I got 3% back, so the internet was more like $48.50 a month. This summer, they suddenly started changing the rules where you cannot get that auto pay discount if you use a credit card. And for a while, people were telling me if you use the Apple card, you still got the 3% back and you still got the auto pay discount. And that turned out not to be true. So I switched it to a debit card. And that was the crazy part to me. I was like, okay, no more credit card. It's just a debit card on file. And they still didn't apply the discount. They wanted to charge me 55 bucks a month for the debit card. And I was like, wait, wait, what happened? Are we just saying goodbye to the $50 a month thing? Because I thought we had price lock and all that. And it turns out, no, even a debit card isn't good enough for them. The only way to get $50 a month is if you have auto pay turned on and you have a direct bank account wire transfer. So no debit or credit cards can be used. You just have to straight up wire the money to them, plug in your routing numbers from your bank account, and then it's $50 a month. But no more cash back and no more Apple Pay, no more convenience of transaction. But ever since then, it has been fairly consistent. They're probably tired of dealing with a lot of the transaction fees that they had to put up with and those rewards programs people were probably getting cash back on. Now it's just a flat 50 a month and most recently the speed hasn't quite been as fast as it used to be I'm afraid to admit. So like when I first got it I was able to see speeds over 100 over 200 megabits per second and oftentimes I would see upload speeds exceed 40 megabits per second which was the fastest I could get on Xfinity even with their most expensive $150 a month plan I still rarely saw more than 40 megabits per second upload. And keep in mind, Xfinity has different prices everywhere. So I know some of you are commenting, you get way better speeds with your internet provider in your area. It's very regionally based, okay? It's not the same everywhere. And this morning, I just did a speed test to keep you guys up to date and it barely hit 80 megabits download and the upload was more closer to 20, which was kind of like the peak I would get with Starlink. But of course, Starlink is far more expensive and I'd probably get Xfinity internet for maybe a little bit more money around 20 megabits upload but then I have to be a customer with Xfinity and that comes with a whole bunch of other strings attached that I hate. They love steadily increasing the price over time unless you call in and complain about it. I hate that business practice and I've had such horrible experiences with Comcast and Xfinity in the past. I don't want to reward them in any way, shape, or form. So no, I'm not switching back until T-Mobile Home Internet gets really, really bad. But right now it's a bit more consistent than Starlink was, which the internet speed on Starlink was like this all the time. I'm not great if you're live streaming, you need kind of a stable connection. And T-Mobile home internet is more like this. It's kind of stable, but then you occasionally have your big dropouts. It's spotty, and you know, I have friends in the area with Xfinity, and they still don't have a flawless track record with their landline internet either. I've had friends in my area with Comcast that still report outages and still report times where the speeds get slower. So I don't think any internet provider is really gonna be perfect unless you find one with fiber internet because that at the hardware level is just objectively superior than any of the options I have in my area, but here's hoping in the future one day we can get fiber, but unfortunately it is not this day, and for the time being, even with its spottiness, T-Mobile Home Internet is stable enough and also cheap enough that I think it's the best option for me at this time. But feel free to let me know what options are working the best for you down in the comments below, and thank you to everybody supporting this channel directly. Seriously, helps us out a ton, as does just watching these videos, so thanks again. This is your Apple Sweep here, and I will see you in the next one.